Obviously, coffee is awesome. Bananas, also very much awesome. And in this series, I wanna see how far we can take the pairing of coffee and bananas in order to make delicious coffee cocktails, which not only use the coffee and the banana itself, but all of the parts of the coffee and the banana that might usually go in the bin or go to waste or different expressions of coffee and banana in order to make those amazing, creative, unique, brand new drinks. So today, I'm gonna to show you how to use this, the banana peel, in order to make a delicious banana peel saccharum, which is a really rich syrup, and also the pucks from Brewer Espresso, which we're gonna to use to infuse into the cocktail at the end of the video, which is called Pucks and Peels, which is a zero waste cocktail. It's banging, I'm really excited about it. I'm gonna be showing you that in the video. So without further ado, let's make some coffee and banana cocktails. This is gonna be fun. <laughs> All right, so what are we exactly doing here? Essentially, I wanted to create a series of serieses which focus on one particular ingredient and using the whole ingredient in lots of different ways and then pair it with coffee to create a really delicious, creative and interesting drink. This is a really good opportunity for me and you and us as a group to kind of push ourselves to create really different drinks using ingredients not how we normally would. So the first combination we're gonna explore in this mini series is the combination of coffee and banana. So as we know, we drink coffee, we eat bananas, we toss quite often the ground coffee in the bin, the espresso pucks in the bin and the peels from the bananas, but not anymore, my friends, because we've got some amazing coffee cocktails and really useful techniques, which we're gonna use those ingredients for to create something brand new. So if you're interested in coffee or cocktails and delicious drinks as a whole, or reducing waste and thinking a little bit more sustainably, or I guess bananas, if you're interested in bananas, this is a good place to be. Make sure you subscribe to the channel because I've got three recipes, one of which I'm gonna show you today and then two in the next two episodes, which are genuinely completely different and really, really fascinating that really pushed the boundaries of what I think I was capable of when it comes to creating coffee cocktails. So stay tuned, stay subscribed and let's make the first drink, which starts by making a really delicious, very complex ingredient from banana peels, which is a banana peel saccharum. And then when we've made the banana peel saccharum, I'm gonna use this to make a zero waste cocktail called Pucks and Peels, which I'm buzzing about. It's based on one of my favorite desserts and flavor combinations in the world. So stay tuned for that. But first, let's make the saccharum. So a banana peel saccharum. Essentially what we're doing here is using the banana peels in order to make a really delicious syrup using a sugar and a little bit of water. And this is gonna be the sweetener in our cocktail, Pucks and Peels, which we're gonna make next. So two bananas, you want the same weight as the peels in a sugar of your choice. I'm going for light muscovado sugar because it's got that kind of really nice toffee note, a little bit of molasses in there, which will tie into the drink, which we're making later, which I'll talk about. So we want to peel our bananas. Gonna put them on the chopping board. With the actual banana itself, just give it a quick chop and we're gonna come back to this in the next episode. And chef's treat. So two of these. Did you know we peel bananas upside down, apparently? In nature, the animals peel them from the bottom to the top. So quick chop of the banana itself. And then a little pro tip, or a hack if you want, is to put this in the freezer. And then when you've got a perfectly ripe banana, come back to it. You can blend it into protein shakes or cocktails, which is what we're gonna do in the next episode, or into a smoothie or whatever, and then it'll keep it at perfect ripeness. Don't let it defrost though, because it goes a bit soft and a bit mushy. So I'm gonna put this in the freezer. All right, so they're freezing for the next episode, and now we can start on our banana peel saccharin. So when I say this is zero waste, it's not 100% zero waste like most things, but I think if we set zero waste as our target, we're gonna improve and make better, more sustainable decisions. So we wanna chop off the ends of the bananas, which are not really great flavor-wise or texture-wise. You want to just chop it loosely. Doesn't matter about being accurate here, but just by chopping it, we get a bit more surface area, giving us an easier job of extracting all the delicious flavor and moisture, which is still in these skins, which is a lot. So now this is all chopped. We're going to pop our peels in our bowl, weighing the weight of it. So pop that on the scales. And two bananas will give us just a good amount of syrup for a few drinks and maybe a few more. So we're gonna be using this in the next episode as well. So keep hold of this. We've got 110 grams 
So we want 110 grams of light muscovado sugar. The drink Pucks and Peels is inspired by one of my favorite dishes in the world, which is caramel bananas. And this is from a restaurant called Porthminster Beach Cafe, which is fantastic. I'd strongly recommend you go if you're in St. Ives in Cornwall. And we're gonna be recreating that flavor profile of kind of caramel bananas and in using light muscovado sugar, I give myself a good chance of getting that caramel flavor through. So all we're gonna do now, give this a quick mix together. And then, as with any oleosaccharum, we're gonna leave that to one side and you'll be left with something after around about 12 hours that looks like this. So as you can see, we've pulled loads of moisture out of the banana skins. This is just banana peel and sugar, and you can see it's softened down to this amazing syrup. And then what we need to do is add 50% of the weight of the banana peel in water, just to bring it down to a usable syrup. So I'm gonna get that water. So because it was 110 gram of peels, we're gonna go 55 grams of water. And then as we do so, it's gonna give that a good mix up. This comes in at a two to one pretty much ratio, which gives us consistency in the sweetness. And then, now we've got this, we wanna pass it through either a paper filter or a very fine sieve, pop it into a bottle, and you'll be left with banana peel saccharum. An amazing, very, very low waste ingredient, which we're gonna to use to make our cocktail, which is called pucks and peels. So pucks and peels is the cocktail we're gonna to make today. And when I tasted the banana saccharum, it just tasted like caramelized bananas. And it brought me back to one of my favorite places in the world, which I mentioned earlier, which is Porthminster Beach Cafe in St. Ives. They do a dessert called Caramel Bananas, which has caramel bananas, as you'd expect, miso caramel, a cinnamon meringue, and pistachio, either as a cake or some kind of delicious crumb or whatever. And I wanted to kind of recreate this flavor profile in the drink, and we're gonna shake it up. So the first thing we're gonna add is 50 mils of discarded banana peel rum. And if you're not aware of discarded, make sure you check them out. They're doing amazing things all around zero waste ingredients, reusing creatively. I'd thoroughly recommend checking them out. And they'll be linked in the description below. This is infused with one part ground coffee, either from espresso pucks or filter coffee to 10 parts of discarded banana peel. And this is the kind of coffee element of the drink. Again, reducing waste reusing something that would normally get in the bin to make something very, very special indeed. So that gives us some banana flavor. And then to pump it up to 11, I'm gonna go 25 mils of our banana peel saccharum. And this has like a darker, richer banana flavor, that kind of leathery tannic note from the skin, as well as some of the flavor from the main body of the banana. So very banana-y, very sweet to begin with. And what we wanna do now is balance this. So I didn't want to add a flavored acid as such. I wanted to create an acid blend using straight acids. So in here, we've got 3.3333333 reoccurring grams of citric acid, which brings freshness and zestiness to complement the sweetness from the banana. We've got 3.333 reoccurring grams of malic acid, which is really crisp, gives it a really nice bite that kind of complements those nutty flavors, the cinnamon flavors, the whole thing just really benefits from that crispness. And then 3.33333 recurring grams of lactic acid, which is kind of creamy, kind of milky, completely vegan, but it gives it a really nice silky texture, which is exactly what we're looking for. So as you know, I'm a salt fiend. I love to add salt to pretty much every cocktail I ever make in different proportions. And rather than adding a saline solution, I wanted to kind of think about that miso caramel that's in the dish, the caramel bananas. And when I tasted white miso in this drink, Oh my word, so good. So white miso is made of soybeans and some salt as well. So it's also got a bit of kind of rich umami in there. And two grams is the threshold really. So any less than two grams and we don't really get the benefit anymore. And you taste the miso in there as an obvious ingredient. And with two grams, it's just about right. Get that really nice brothiness, the kind of really mouth watering, rich, Moorish kind of thing that umami things have. And as well as that, a little bit of salt. So that is a really good ingredient that I'm gonna be using a lot more and I'd recommend you play around with. And then the final liquid ingredient I'm gonna add 
is 25 mils of aquafaba. So aquafaba is the water from a can of chickpeas, and by adding this in there, we're able to get that really nice meringue-like texture, which you could also use egg white for, but this is completely vegan and actually works really, really well in the drink. And this also has a slight flavor, which is criticized quite often by a lot of bartenders who don't like to use it. But as you'll see later, we're gonna be adding lots of aromatic things to the final drink, so this won't be an issue at all, and you get a really nice fluffy texture. So to summarize the recipe, we've got 50 mils of our discarded banana peel rum, which is infused with spent coffee. We've got 25 mils of our banana peel saccharum, delicious, made with equal parts banana skins and sugar, and then half the amount of the first ingredient of water, so two to one syrup. 10 grams of our citric, lactic, and malic acid solution, all at 3.3 grams recurring. Two grams of white miso for that really rich umami, and 25 mils of our aquafaba chickpea water. So now we wanna give this a really good shake over ice. And then, now that's really nice and cold, we wanna pass it from the big shaker into the small shaker, and then we're gonna strain that back across into the big shaker. And the reason for this will become apparent. So we don't need to worry if there's a few shards of ice in there, because the next thing we're gonna do is stick blend this, which will give it really nice frothy texture, similar to the meringue. And this is to mimic the kind of dry shake you'd often use for a sour, using a stick blender for efficiency and to get that really nice fluffiness. So I'm gonna go into turbo mode. And now we can start serving the drink. So the liquid portion of the drink is very, very cold, really frothed up. Now we need to finish it off with some pretty cool garnishes if I say so myself. So as I said, the Portminster dish has that really nice pistachio, either in the form of a cake or a crumb, and the caramel from the bananas. So what I've done is brushed these frozen glasses before freezing with a salted caramel sauce, and then coated them with crumbed pistachio, which I blended in a blender until it was a kind of coarse texture. Then I poured this over the glass, so it stuck to the amazing caramel. And now we have this awesome, beautifully textured, delicious glass. So I'm gonna pour the cocktail straight in there. Nice and cold, frozen glass. Foamy, like a meringue. There you go, like the dish. And then the final two parts are a little dusting of cinnamon, which covers the aroma of any chickpea that you might find in there. Go from a nice height, so you get a nice thin layer. And again, this complements the cinnamon meringues in the dish. And then the final part is a little caramelized banana slice saved from earlier on, which I've just covered in white sugar, blowtorched, and then caramelized. And there we have a drink I'm buzzing about Pucks and peels. Cheers. I think I should start with a caramelized banana. Love it. I don't know if it's socially acceptable to lick a glass in public, but I'm not officially in public. I'm in my home studio, so I'm gonna lick the glass. I don't even care. Mmm, salted caramel, pistachio. Cinnamon, foamy, coffee. Loads of kind of rich banana flavor coming through. I love the dessert. I really love this drink and I'd love to try them together. So there we have it, Pucks and Peels, which is our first banana and coffee cocktail. So stay tuned for the other coffee cocktails, which I'll be linking here. So here I'll put our next video, which is potentially the ultimate summer coffee cocktail, which is a banger, really simple, really delicious. And then click here for something a little bit more serious, the serious smoky side of bananas. So if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel here for lots more coffee cocktail fun, and I'll see you soon. Cheers.